Welcome back to another learning series with Mr. Knight. Today's topic is on aerobic versus anaerobic respiration. Respiration is the process by which cells produce energy from food. The energy that is produced is in a chemical form known as ATP. ATP is considered to be the usable form of energy by organisms. ATP is also the abbreviation for the chemical adenosine triphosphate. The food that is normally used for respiration is glucose, which, which is a form of carbohydrate. So carbohydrates are the primary sources for energy production in organisms. Now, the types of respiration, which, which are aerobic and anaerobic, Aerobic respiration requires oxygen. However, anaerobic respiration does not require any oxygen. So it is without oxygen. Generally speaking, aerobic respiration takes place in the mitochondria, mitochondrion for a single one. And these are organelles within cells. Now, some important facts about aerobic respiration is that one, it starts in the cytoplasm. Most of it occurs in the mitochondria. And for this reason, we generally state that aerobic respiration takes place in the mitochondria. But now you know that it starts in the cytoplasm, but most of it is occurring in the mitochondria. There are three stages for aerobic respiration. One is the glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and ETC, which is the abbreviation for electron transport chain. However, in this lesson, we will not be dealing with these stages. Now, the word equation for aerobic respiration is that aerobic respiration requires the food, which is glucose. It will react that with oxygen to produce water, carbon dioxide, and energy in the form of ATP. A point to note that from one glucose molecule, you'll get 36 molecules of ATP. It turns out to be an approximate value of 2,880 kilojoules of energy. Before we move on, I want to point out a few things. What need to start the reaction, those are called reactants. So the reactants will come before the arrow. After the arrow, you have the products and important to note we have three products the the water carbon dioxide and energy however water and carbon dioxide they are classified as waste products or otherwise called byproducts therefore means the body will have to excrete these substances because they are waste now the chem the balanced chemical equation for aerobic re for aerobic respiration is that you have glucose reacts with oxygen to produce water carbon dioxide and energy however I want to pay attention to these numbers for it to be balanced glucose which is c6h12o6 Oxygen is O2, but notice there's a 6 in front of it. I'll come to that. Water is H2O, but there's a 6 in front of that. Carbon dioxide is CO2, but there's a 6 in front of that. So easy way, once you get this equation correct, you put a 6 in front of everything except the glucose. Now, why these numbers 
are here. It, they are here because on either side of the equation, the reactant side and the product side, the molecules or the atoms must be the same. Because remember, matter cannot be created or destroyed. We only can convert them from one form to another. To, so to conserve the atoms, they must be the same on either side. So if you check the value, the, the value of each atom, you'll realize that on either side you have 6 carbon, a total of 12 H's on either side, and a total of 18 oxygen on either side. So the, these numbers are to balance the equation. Now let's look at anaerobic respiration. Now anaerobic respiration is a very useful respiration or energy production process to us. It is very important for us in two main industry, the brewing, the brewery industry and the baking industry. So generally for food production, aerobic res anaerobic respiration is very important. So we can get our alcoholic beverages because of anaerobic respiration. We get products such as yogurt and vinegar. We get our bread and bread products from anaerobic respiration because the carbon dioxide that produces from anaerobic respiration will cause bread to rise. So for all of these products, we can say thanks to yeast and bacteria because they are very important organisms that will help to produce these food products. Anaerobic respiration takes place in the cytoplasm. So notice it is outside of the mitochondria. So the space within the cell where chemical reaction takes place generally, that's the place where anaerobic respiration takes place. Anaerobic respiration is generally called fermentation. And there are two types of anaerobic respiration or fermentation. One is called alcoholic fermentation, and that is done by yeast and some bacteria. We have lactic acid fermentation, and that is done by animals, in fact, in the muscles of animals. And I'm going to talk about that in a few, and also by some bacteria. So bacteria that produce yogurt and vinegar, they will produce lactic acid. And that is the reason why vinegar and yogurt, they are normally have this sour taste. Now, the word equation for alcoholic fermentation, re remember there is no need for oxygen in this case. So the glucose, which is the food, so, so a point to note at this point is that all respiration requires the food, which is glucose. And glucose will break down into ethanol, which is the alcohol. And you also get carbon dioxide. And this carbon dioxide is very useful in the baking of bread. When, when bread is being baked, the carbon dioxide will produce and cause the bread to rise. And you get your energy. It turns out to be that one glucose molecule produces only two ATP molecules, which is, a, which is equivalent to approximately 210 kilojoules of energy. So please make note of these numbers. Again, we have the reactant. In this case, only one reactant. And we have the products. The waste products from this type of respiration are ethanol and carbon dioxide. So the organism will try to get rid of those two byproducts because the main product for any respiration is energy. The balanced chemical equation for alcoholic fermentation is that the glucose, remember C6H12O6, will form ethanol, and ethanol is C2H5OH, and that is two molecule. And remember that number that is in red is just the balance of the equation to make sure that on either side the atoms are the same. And you also have CO2, which is carbon dioxide, but there are two molecules of carbon dioxide formed. And so to balance off the equation, both 
sides of the equation, the reactant side and the product side, must have 6 carbon, 12 hydrogen, and 6 oxygen. So if you check the numbers, you get that. So to get the carbon number, for example, it is 2 times 2, which is 4, plus this 2 is 6. Okay, so you can just go through the numbers and check them, and you'll see that on either side, the numbers are the same. Now, for lactic acid fermentation, which is a very unique type of respiration, and it takes place in the muscles, the cells of the muscles in our bodies, for example. So when you're running and undergoing strenuous exercise, you will start to produce, you will start to produce energy by lactic acid fermentation. Reason being because your body will become low in oxygen, and that is why you breathe harder and faster and if your heart rate also increases so supply your cells with the glucose and oxygen however sometimes the oxygen becomes so low in the cells and it will start to produce energy by lactic acid fermentation in fact it is a quick production of energy but we're going to get into that in a while now what is required for this again is the food which is glucose that is a common thing about all respiration they all require they all required glucose now the glucose will break down into lactic acid and i'm going to see something very interesting in a short while and you also get your energy so there are only two things produced from lactic acid fermentation the lactic acid and the energy it turns out to be that one glucose molecule will produce two ATP molecules, which is, which is equivalent to approximately 120 kilojoules of energy. So we have the reactant, we have the products. So the waste product or the byproduct from lactic acid fermentation is lactic acid. So notice there's no other thing that is being produced except lactic acid and energy. So let's look at the balanced chemical equation to see the interesting thing that is happening. Notice what happened here. The glucose molecule breaks down into half. So notice from C6, you get C3. From H12, you get H6. And from O6, you get O3, which is the formula for lactic acid. So to balance this equation, is quite easy. You just multiply the lactic acid by two. To make both to make both sides equal six carbon on either side 12 hydrogen on either side and six oxygen on either side so now the equation is balanced now there's a concept known as oxygen depth all right and oxygen depth occurs during strenuous exercise when there is a low level of oxygen in the body so when this oxygen is low, the cells will continue to make energy without oxygen. And since the cell is saying, okay, you need oxygen, you need energy, I'm going to still make this energy for you, but you hold me some oxygen. So that hoeing of oxygen is actually called oxygen depth. So there's an extra need for oxygen that is being owed. That extra oxygen is needed to break down lactic acid. If lactic acid is not being broken down, it will result in cramping in the muscles. So to get rid of lactic acid, the body will require some extra oxygen. And that is why after exercise or even for after a long run, you realize you start to breathe harder and faster to repay that oxygen debt. Additionally, after a cramp, you notice if you have a therapist, they will tend to massage that area. Why? Is to push blood or to increase the blood flow to that spot. So oxygen can be concentrated in that area to break down the lactic acid. All right, let's look at the differences between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. First point to note is that aerobic requires oxygen anaerobic respiration does not require any form of oxygen so, so it is without oxygen aerobic respiration is generally occurring in the mitochondria 
or you can say both cytoplasm and mitochondria but for this lesson and general purposes we generally state that it occurs in the mitochondria while anaerobic respiration takes place in the cytoplasm aerobic respiration produces more energy compared to anaerobic respiration aerobic respiration takes a longer time and anaerobic respiration takes a shorter time so it's faster and a point to note at this point is that if aerobic respiration takes longer it therefore result in a complete breakdown of glucose however anaerobic respiration results in an incomplete broken down of glucose for aerobic respiration you produce water however for anaerobic respiration there is no production of water what is being produced in anaerobic respiration is carbon dioxide in some cases if it is alcoholic fermentation or you may produce lactic acid if it is lactic acid fermentation the other difference is that the waste from aerobic respiration they are easier to be removed or excreted from the organism however for anaerobic respiration the waste products are harder to be removed so if for example lactic acid takes a longer time to be removed alcohol also takes a longer time unless you have high heat and some enzymes that will work over time to get rid of them all right so folks we are now at the end of the lesson thank you for being here it's also fun to be with you again if you wish to see more lessons like these please hit the subscription button and feel free to share with your friends see you in the next lesson